and we have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on the telephone. So tell us a little bit about your latest project, my friend. Tell us all about it. Hey, James, and thanks uh, for, for asking me to join. Yes, on, yes. On your show. Um, so my latest project, or the project that I'm uh, passionate about and just, just joined, is a company called Chargeback 911. Okay. I joined them recently as chairman, um, having had a, a reasonably long career in the banking industry, uh, culminating at the Bank of America, running their payment system. Um, but really joined Chargeback 911 at a point where there's a, a lot going on in the payments industry and specifically in the way that chargebacks happens uh, with, from a consumer and a merchant perspective. Um, and so I've joined them at a point where I think we've got a great solution um, and a platform that will help address pain points that we're seeing both from our consumers uh, and cardholders and also our merchants and customers. So give us a little bit more details on what you guys do. So we're a technology uh, pro platform provider um, with an end-to-end -end chargeback and dispute management system. So that's the technical term. In reality, we have software that allow merchants to manage the whole of what's called a chargeback um, service. And... So, you know, in, in real terms, in consumer terms, chargeback is where somebody makes a payment on a card um, and they they think they've either not had the product that they thought they'd ordered from a retailer or an e-commerce uh, customer um, or something's gone wrong or, in fact, there's, there's a, an issue within the overall relationship. And chargeback is, is the process of allowing the consumer protection in order for there to be a dispute resolution between the merchant and the consumer. And it captures the whole end-to-end -end process of saying, hey, I don't think I really had this service if I didn't. And, and there's a research that takes place as to saying, is it a consumer issue, is it a merchant issue, and who's liable for the ultimate cost? And our platform has automated that, that, that process to try and make it as smooth as possible for both the consumer and the merchant. That is fantastic. We have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on our big, big broadcast. Guy Harris is with us today. Now, Mr. Harris, you, you have got such a great background here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how this all works. How can technology resolve credit disputes, chargebacks, friendly fraud faster, more economically, and help maintain relationships with consumers for a better future for our economy? Talk to us about this, my friend. Well, it's interesting, and, and you know, the word so technology is, is is the ability to uh, of a platform to help this overall process, but let's just look a little bit more at what, you know, you mentioned the word friendly fraud, and it's quite a sort of an interesting statement. Friendly fraud, you know, it's a behavior that emanates from chargebacks, but it's it's filed where there's actually a legitimate transaction that takes place, but actually it's, it's classified as friendly fraud. So it's, 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 let's think of, give a simple example. My son uh, lives at home online, does a transaction, and actually does buy a game. And because I don't see that tells me why that took place on my card, I then call up my issuing card, bank card issuer, rather than the merchant, to say, hold on a minute, did you ship this? And say, I don't recognize this transaction. And in fact, it did take place. So it, although it's called friendly fraud, it really is a, a form of fraud. Now, the issue here is that many banks will decide because of the cost of fighting that and the impact on their customers, they will honor that payment or credit that payment back to the consumer. Therefore, the merchant has to um, take a chargeback and ultimately fight that chargeback, which costs it money. So, so although it, they supplied a product and they sent it to a customer, they've ultimately had to uh, give a credit back through the chargeback process for something they've already sent. And so it's called friendly fraud. It, it, it's also called first-party fraud and chargeback fraud. 
Um, but it's grown over 41% in the last two years alone. And as we see e-commerce growing, as, as we all know, we're buying more and more online, the growth of this fraud is taking place at a higher percentage than even the growth. There's, there's approximately 15% growth in e-commerce in the industry and in the market, but our chargebacks has grown at 20%. So it's going at a faster pace than even e-commerce is growing. Wow. We have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on our big broadcast. Chargebacks 911, the challenging, the status quo. And we have got with us today the fantastic Guy Harris. He joins us here on our big broadcast. So what attracted you to joining this organization? Well... James, great question. And, and you know, as I was finishing my, my career in terms of, of working for large financial institutions, my last one was Bank of America, and prior to that it was U.S. Bank Elevon, um, where I was on the, the, the payment side of, of those banks. Um, I, I met uh, and got involved with Monica Eaton, who, uh, you know, and I always say, you know, why did I join Starfax? Well, there was four reasons, but number one was Monica herself. She founded the company. 11 years ago um, uh, from scratch uh, and built a brand new platform. So she is uh, somebody I think as a leader is, is a, a great talent for, from a payments perspective, from a woman in, in fintech perspective and, and just somebody that has made a huge difference. The second most important thing is that Chargeback 911 has a developed and built platform. So this isn't a fintech startup where they've got an idea that they think they can build something, but we have built it. It's there, it's live. And then the uniqueness of it is that not only we built it from scratch under Monica's leadership, but since that uh, start date, we've added two and a half million customers and 50 in, uh, financial institutions to the platform. So many startups, as they're called, go through a process of trying to get large customers, including banks, like the banks I've come from, Many don't make that transition and succeed in selling solutions to large organizations. Uh, Chargeback 911 has done that, and they've done that because they've got a great technology platform that's advanced and offers great benefit to their customers, whether they be the merchants or the financial institutions. So, you know, it was a great leader, built a platform with a customer base, a growing business. I believe we can double the size of the company in the next three years. And, and then finally, of course, from a personal perspective, that I can add some value to this young, vibrant organization with a bit of gray hair and a bit of experience. <laughs> we have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on our big broadcast, Coast to Coast, Border to Border on iHeartRadio today, Chargebacks 911. And we are talking about that today with the fantastic guy, Harris. So how has the current state of payment industry led merchants to incur exorbitant amounts of chargeback loss. Talk to me about this guy. Well, uh, yeah, it's a, bear in mind it's a three-way party. You've got, the, you've got the issuer that issues the credit card. You have the consumer, and then you have the merchant, uh, sorry, four-way, and you have the um, networks, which is, if you think about on a card, you see network, you see um, MasterCard, and you see Visa. But, but to give you some stats, for every dollar of chargeback, which is the transaction query process, a merchant pays over $3 in fees, admin costs, loss of product. Think about its reputational damage and the cost of sale. Because if you dispute something with a customer and you say, no, hold on, I've got proof you, we did deliver this, then you, know, you may well win the dispute, but you don't win additional business. So... So what we're seeing is, is a, a big overhead that's taking place for the merchant, and they're caught a little bit in the crossfire of what I call, talked about the friendly fraud, and the fact that we have a, a pretty old system. I always think about, as, as a customer, if you think about yourself as a credit card customer, when you get your statement, if the statement gives you a low data on every single one of your transactions, and in fact, you don't have to wait for your statement these days, you're online, you're digital, and you say, hold on, I've seen something come up, and it says I spent $100. If it says I bought a tie at this shop in Florida, in Jacksonville or wherever, then you'll say, oh, that's, that's a, that's a, that I did make that transaction. But if you get something, and this is where it gets a little bit wobbly, you get just a statement saying 
the actual company was based somewhere in Michigan, and so you don't recognize the name of it, you then query it. And that query triggers a chargeback, which triggers an overhead, which trigger, triggers cost and time for a merchant. So, so it's in, occurring because the technology prior to companies like ourselves doesn't give the ability to give clear data to both customers and merchants so that we can genuinely have a conversation about the transaction. Because most of us, when the transaction is proven, i.e. it did happen, we want to pay. It isn't that we're fraudulent. We just don't, don't recognize it. So it's kind of an imperfect storm that's occurring. We have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live. Guy Harris is with us. He is amazing. And he joins us here on our big program. So what role do banks and credit card companies play in preventing this, this friendly fraud that we were talking about? Are they doing enough to address this issue, Mr. Harris? Um, short answer is no, um, but, but, but they, they and we are helping um, the industry fix this. So think about the credit card issuer. So, I came from Bank of America, Bank of America issue uh, credit cards. And part of this is, is instead of automating and allowing the, the um, chargeback to go through and giving the customer credit, is educating the customer. So we've got to help, we as an industry, but banks and credit card companies in particular, have got to help the customers to realize that when a transaction is a genuine transaction, here's proof, and they shouldn't shouldn't continue to to claim in that way. Um, it's interesting. Another stat that that, that that people should be aware of: 60% of consumers who use the chargeback me mechanism and don't experience any consequence will innocently do it again within 90 days. So, repeat offenders, they've done it once. You said, "Oh, I didn't buy that, and I don't know whether I did, but I'll just claim I didn't." Oh, I got paid it back. That's great. And then 60 days later, or sorry, 90 days later, they do it again. So the banks, I think, as they develop and deliver uh, technologies like ourselves to help uh, the merchants and the consumers to recognize when a transaction genuinely took place and when it does take place, not to give a credit to the consumer. That is fantastic. It is Guy Harris. He's with us today here on our big broadcast talking a little bit about Chargebacks 911. And he joins us today here on the telephone. So, guys, we wrap up here. How do we get in touch with, uh, with you guys online and through social media and all that? Well, for those of you on LinkedIn, we're active on LinkedIn. You'll see daily blogs on, on all these types of subjects from, from our leadership, including Monica. Um, obviously, we have our website, um, and and we're very keen. If if you experience anything that you need help with, with regard to chargebacks, whether that be you're a merchant listening, we have a great platform. Even a consumer, we can give a better understanding of what happened. So you can get us on our website. You can get us on on LinkedIn, um, and we'd be more than happy to to help you. Fantastic. Well, what you're doing is amazing, my friend. Uh, I'm, I'm just blown away by this whole thing. Th thank you for making some time for us today. I definitely want to have you back because, uh, you are a wealth of information, my friend. Uh, thanks for making some time for us today and, uh, have yourself a blessed, blessed day, my friend. My pleasure, James. Thanks thank for you. Having me. There he goes. Mr. Guy Harris. We are going to take a break. When we come back, we have got... More, we're going to wrap things up here on the other side next. Man talk, woman talk, Nigeria.